everyone, uh, CSS Grid and WordPress. Uh, my name is Juan Pablo. People call me JP. Uh, I'm a web designer, New York-based web designer. I, I want to start with a show of hands. Who's, who's heard of CSS Grid? Who's heard of it? Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, who's written some CSS Grid? Good, good. So we have a, a few hands up. Uh, hopefully, after this session, we'll get uh, Quite a few more. Uh, all right, so let's get started. So my name is Juan Pablo. I'm a web designer. Um, design things for uh, FC Harlem up in New York and New York City FC, which is a soccer club, which is playing today against Atlanta, which I'm not going to mention. Uh, and I'm also a mentor at blog.io, um, UX. Uh, all right, so let's get started. So I, I usually like to split up this talk into uh, three sections, which is why CSS create, how, and when. Uh, the why is still really important, the how also. The when is basically now, you said now, right? Uh, the one that I've added is demos, because was, you know, since I started doing this, I've been doing a few things, I've been adding more stuff, so I'm really excited to share a few of them. Um, all right, so let's start with the why. Why is CSS great? And I usually like to start with, with a simple question. Um, what do these three things have in common, right? Uh, Glenn? <laughs> Uh, a movie and a book. Uh, one of the things they have in common, well, they, they might have a few things in common. One of the things they have in common is that they're all from the 80s, 1983, 1986, right? Uh, the other thing they have in common is that they're all older than the web, right? They existed before the web existed, right? And it's, and it's with this mindset, well, this is, what, this is how it makes me feel as soon as I realize that, right? It's, <laughs> you know, that's me right there. And it's, it is with this, with this, sorry, and it's with this mindset that I'd like you to, to, to view this talk, to understand that how young this medium is, right? How um, now, right now is the perfect way to learn, the perfect uh, time to learn CSS Create, right? Whether you're a designer, whether you're a developer, whether you're a blogger who just installed their, their first blog ever, right now it's a great way to get started. Uh, so let's, let's take a quick trip back, right? Uh, 1989. Sir Timothy John Berners-Lee, Tim Berners-Lee, right? He invents the World Wide Web. Uh, and this is, this is our layout. This is the first layout that we ever get, right? There's basically no layout, right? Left to right, you hit the end, and then you start on the next line. Uh, it, stayed, it stayed like that for a while, but the designers were like, hey, we need something more. Uh, <laughs> 1995 comes around, we get tables, right? And designers were like, OK, this is good, this is good. So what's this? Uh, it looks like a grid, so let's. <coughs> Well, it's a table, and it was built for this time, but let's just, just use that table. And, and we have some columns and some rows, and, and, and we started, you know, you can call it destroying, but we could say, like, creating right? <laughs> layout. Uh, and, you know, with time, we realized this was not the layout we wanted, but, you know, you can see there was already a hunger for doing, imitating what we saw somewhere else in the web, right? Imitating what we saw in print with what we wanted to do on the web. Uh, so that was 95. It's also worth noticing that 95 JavaScript, so JavaScript has been around for a while. And JavaScript solves a lot of pretty awesome pro problems. And JavaScript is it's, it's great. You should learn it. But JavaScript was not built for layout. And it's, it's really important to understand this. JavaScript does not solve a lot of the problems that we, we usually do try to solve with it. But it wasn't built for that. So um, it's been around for a while, but it was not the solution that we wanted for layouts. Wait, was that? Oh, wow. Sorry. <laughs> oh, no. All right, don't, don't, don't abuse your pop-ups. Basically, that's what I'm trying to say here. It's so 95. 96, Flash comes around, and it's also worth noting that because Flash, once again, does this thing that we designers want, right? It gives us, it, it gives us a platform where we can feel like Tom Cruise, and we can do, do those list things, and, 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 and some keyframes and timelines and drag stuff, and we get to create some, some really, really awesome stuff. Um, built this for, for FC Harlem a few years back, and I was, you know, I was like, oh, this is so easy. I don't need to learn how to code. Uh, you know, uh, unfortunately, this did not solve the problem for layers, right? It was a closed ecosystem. You need to buy it, and then you need, you, you was, it was really bad for SEO. Uh, it, had a, it had many, many issues that eventually um, <coughs> made us realize that this was not the solution we were looking for. Uh, the main thing that made it go away was this fella with the iPhone and basically uh, put the nail in the coffin. But I mean, that was 96, right? So, so it, you know, the, the web was growing fast. Uh, it wasn't until 98, right, almost 10 years later, that, that CSS comes around and, and once again, it shifts the way we think about the web, right? It revolutionizes the way we build things. Uh, we got this very forgiven, very declarative thing where, you know, we write something on one page and then it works everywhere else and, and, and we get to 
we get to do this, this, this amazing things that we were not able to do before. And uh, the thing with this is that our screen size is still the same size for a while, right? And this is something we're really, really familiar with. We have the, the content and, and the sidebar. And this is, you know, you see this nowadays. Uh, because it's something that we, start, we started uh, building because of the way of the limitations that we had, but it just stuck around. And what happened is that this stuck around, but the device sizes didn't, right? And, and we got this thing, and then we got this thing, <laughs> and then we got this thing, right? <laughs> and, and it got a little bit overwhelmed, overwhelming, right? And, and we sort of did something like this, where we were like, you know what, I'm just going to hide things, and I'm just going to hack my way through this. Um, <laughs> A few years back in 2010, uh, Ethan Marcot, right, he's, he's an amazing designer, amazing developer, and he said, you know, we should look for opportunities to be just a little lazy. He came up with the term of responsive design, where why don't we use percentages? Why don't we just let the, the web, you know, grow up and grow down naturally and, and, and don't basically don't use so much code? And once again, it changes the way we see things. It changes the way, you know, we think about the web, we think about how we're building things. And it was pretty amazing. The problem is that we still have these restrictions with with the technology, and we took the lazy part a little bit too far, right? And we sort of started building the same layout, the same website, over and over and over again. And you see some of these are really beautiful, but you know, it's the background with the sidebar, and the background, and the nice text, and the background, and you know, and it goes on and on and on. And once again, you know, the web is only 29 years old, right? And we had to design the website conforming to its limitations. You know, we build layout frameworks and layout plugins and layout boilerplates just to mask those limitations. And, you know, once again, something like this happens. And, uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the only one that's different is the one with the lowercase d. <laughs> that one stands out. Uh, so this is where the magic comes. CSS, CSS Grid does not hide those limitations. CSS Grid gets rid of them. Uh, Jen Simmons. You know, one of my design heroes, and, and uh, the reason I started doing CSS Grid, she said at, at, a, at a conference, you know, this new CSS re revolutionizes web page layout. Um, and right now you're thinking, okay, okay, JP, we get it. You're excited. Grid is awesome. What I, what I want to know is how. How do I use this magical thing you speak of? So uh, for the demos and for all of the uh, little next, uh, the, 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 the little videos on the slides, I'm using uh, Firefox. Uh, developer edition. Uh, most browsers have some sort of you know, tool to help you see how a website is built. Uh, when it comes to Grid, uh, Firefox is the best by far. So download it whenever you have a chance. If you haven't, and, and play around with it, I'll show you some, some neat tricks. All right, so uh, well that's just the video. So for the next little demos, on to show you how the, an idea of how Grid works, uh, all I'm using is some HTML, you know, I did a container with six boxes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I added some CSS that had like a color red, a color blue, a color yellow, a color green, a color purple, a color orange. That's all I'm doing uh, besides the grid stuff. All right, so this is some magic. So, <laughs> grid, here it is. What is this? All right, so <laughs> first thing, the way the browser knows you're using grid, you just do display grid. This is the very, very, very first, the magic intro into grid. Uh, you do display grid. A browser knows that you're, that you're about to start doing your layout in grid. Uh, you're good to go. Then the second thing is columns, right? You set your columns. As you can see in the, in the little image, I have three columns there. So all I did was, hey, grid, give me three columns. One is 1FR, one is 5FR, one is 3FR. And then you're thinking, what is FR? Right? What, what is that? Uh, well, FR is just a fraction. Just think of school. Like we, we use fractions all the time. So a fraction of, of an FR is a fraction of the available space in the grid container, which basically means up to this point, we were, you know, if you have three columns, you will have to think, okay, so this one is 60%, and then this one is 30%, and then this one is 10%. But then, oh no, I have to change the image, so this one is 65. So you will have to guess, you know, you move one thing, and, and the rest will have, you have to accommodate, so you will get to 100%. With this, you let the browser do the math. You don't really care for the, for the width. You just do something that's, you know, that looks good. That's what you want. And then the browser, let the browser do the rest. If you do two columns and the rest one you don't know the width, I let the browser figure it out. You don't have to do it anymore. So that's, that's one of the sweetest things that, that Display Grid is bringing. Uh, another amazing thing is Grid allows us for the first time ever to think of 
a page as two-dimensional, right? Up to, up to now, up to last year when it was launched, it was impossible to think to do it with code, with CSS. Or not with code, with CSS. Uh, so if you look at a poster, you know, you're designing, or, or you, you look at any movie poster, any poster out there, any book cover, you know, they have these nice, beautiful things overlapping, and, and, and they can move stuff around. But with, with the web, it was, it was really, really hard. So template rows does that. It allows us to actually set our rows. So here, instead of FR, I can actually do pixels. So I did my first row is 200 pixels, the second row is 100 pixels, the third row is 80 pixels. And you see what's happening there. The third row, it's empty. There are, you know, I only did six, six uh, containers. But it's white space. White space exists now. We can do whatever we want in that spot. We can leave it alone. We can expand it. We can you know, no more negative margins, no more super paddings, no more, I don't know, position absolute, floating, hacking. No, the rows will take care of that. And that's, I'll show you in a few seconds, a few other examples. That's an amazing new intro that we get with rows. We have in two-dimensional layouts. And then the next new thing is a grid gap. Um, basically, no more paddings, no more guessing. It just does a gap for you. Um, I'm actually, I can play the video. So I have, I'm playing around with the gaps right there. They're getting bigger. And then I'm playing around with some of the column sizes. And the browser is just doing it. I just you know, change around. And then I change the screen size. And it always, know that's, it always knows that 1 is 1 FR, 5 FR, 3 FR. Basically, 1, 5, 3 is 9. Yeah, so 1, 9, 5, 9, and 3, 9. And it's doing the math for me. Uh, this is from the first spec of, the, of, the, of CSS Grid. The second one that's coming out you will be able to do different size for gaps, uh, different size for rows and for columns. It's, it's looking pretty awesome. All right, so that's the first demo, right? And this is pretty straightforward. Now let's, do, let's look at another sample. Uh, this one, you have a client. And the client says, I need an ad on my site. And my ad has got to be 100 pixels. And that's the blue one, right? And I need it there at all times because I need to make money. So you're thinking. Wait, so that's not responsive anymore. So see, with, with uh, display grid, with the columns, we can actually say, well, the first, first column was going to be 3 FR. The second one is going to be an ecstatic 100 pixels. And the, the third one is going to be whatever is left. And that's pretty awesome, because I don't really know what the left and the right are. I know that one needs to be 100 pixels. And the same for my rows. One is going to be 200 pixels, one is going to be 100, one is going to be uh, 50 VH, which is another unit. So I'm, I'm just mixing units here, and I'm having fun, and I'm seeing what works best for my layout. And then I can go around, and the blue one, I can tell it, hey, uh, blue, it needs to expand two rows, not just one. So you see, it automatically goes up. And then I tell my column, hey, my column, my orange column needs to expand three columns. And it just does it for me. I don't need to do any math, any anything. It knows, it knows more or less where to go. And if I expand it, you notice that the blue one is always going to be 100 pixels. The first one is going to expand and contract. And the other one, it's going to uh, do whatever is left. Like I, I'll let the browser do the math. So you want to build a mini gallery. You know, you're seeing that you have rows and columns. So that makes sense, right, to do it. So I don't really want to write, you know, one column, one column, one column, one column, one column. You can actually have things like repeat, where you just tell the browser, hey, please do five columns that are all the same size and do four rows that are all like 10 BW, 10 times the view per width. And it just does it for you. And you see if I expand it and collapse it, it's always going to be five columns. And the browser is going to be, I mean, and the rows are go always going to be the same. They're there. It's, it's, you know, it's white space, it's empty, but the browser knows that they're there. Now, uh, this one. It's not as responsive as we wanted, right? Because we usually don't do this with galleries. We don't make them shrink, and then we don't make them expand. We usually want them to break. And for that, we usually use media queries. We tell the browser, hey, browser, when you get to this point, please stop growing, stop shrinking. Just bring it to the next line. Now we can do this with grid. We can, it's a little, you know, the code is a little bit, uh, it's getting a little bit complex. But basically what it's saying is, hey, I want my columns to auto fit. I want them to have a minimum of 120 pixels and a maximum of whatever the other columns are. So they're always the same width, all of them, but they're never smaller than 120 pixels. So what happens is when something gets 120 pixels, it just goes to the next line, and it just goes to the next line, and it just goes to the next line. And all this happened with one line of CSS. And that's amazing. That's, that's something that we have not been able to do until now. Uh, that's one of my favorite parts of CSS Grid. Then, you know, you have a friend, they're a designer, they're an artist, right? And they're like, I want this layout. And if you think of this layout in the past, it's like, whoa, like, how do I do this? Like, okay, so maybe I negative margins, maybe absolute, maybe fix things. 
Uh, so with grid, you can actually have this concept of implicit and explicit. Implicit means just things fall down naturally, the way you, you, know, you add one thing and then the other one, you add an image, you add a text, you add something, it just goes below. Explicit means, having a grid means you have lines, so you can just position things whatever you want. So for the red one, I'll just tell it, hey, you, you are going to go from line two to four and one to three, you're going to go from three to five and two to six, and you're gonna go from the purple, you're gonna go from row four to five and column one to four, and they just, they go whatever you want them to go. Uh, and then the code, on the code on top is the same exact code as the previous. Like nothing changed on my CSS. All I did was tell this, this uh, individual ones, please go somewhere else on the page. And what happens is, you know, I, I'm, I'm messing around with where I want them to land. I just, if I just move a few of the numbers, the, the, you know, the, the containers just start moving around. And that is, that is, that is pretty awesome. Uh, one of the other things, is this is a little also more complex, but just so you know, if you're working with teams and you're working on a, on a template and you're building something, uh, it's also possible with Grid to actually give your, your sections names. So for this one, I just, I'm using Grid template area. I built an area, and the area is going to be, it's going to be a header and an ad, and it's going to be a content and a sidebar, and the footer is just going to be, God bless America. Uh, you can do an emoji. <laughs> and so, and then it's going to be a gap on the rows only, not on the columns. <coughs> so the first grid area is going to be header. So since I called it header, you notice that on my template area above, the header is only red. And then the green one is going to be the one that goes on the sidebar. And then the, the what is it, friend? Well, that's wrong. Uh, but the emoji is going to be at the bottom one. So you can actually give them names and you can move them around. So if you think of, you think of, uh, uh, of how to sh uh, shuffle stuff around, all you got to do is do your template areas and then you move this around as you feel like. All right, so I'll do a few more demos in a, in a minute, but I just wanted uh, to go over when. When is now, right? Just, just a little recap of where we are and where we started. So we started on, on March 8, 2017, and, and support for CSS Grid is at 0.32%. Not looking good. Uh, three weeks later, boom, 26%. And, and the thing that happens is uh, Firefox released it, uh, Chrome, Safari, Opera, they all released Grid at once. And this had, uh, this had not happened bef any, any, um, well, any time before. It's just the first time it happens. The reason being is that before, a browser will just release it, and then they'll change it as, it as it went, and then people will start using it, and then the spec will change, and people will get upset and stop using it. What they did here is they all work you know, behind doors. They released it, and they released, they released it on the newer versions of the browsers. People will play around with it, people will give feedback, people will iterate, and then when they were ready, they send it into production, and it was everywhere. And that was, that was, that was uh, just last year, yeah. So we were at 26%. Uh, Jen Simmons wrote, she, she wrote on Twitter, you know, three weeks ago, Firefox, two weeks ago, Chrome, last week, Opera, today, Safari, yes, CSS Grid is here. And, you know, Twitter being Twitter, people started writing, I don't know if you can see it, hurrah, anywhere on Edge, come on, Edge, what about Edge, how about Edge, okay, Edge, uh, <laughs> CSS Grid is not here, because I, I don't forget that Apple users are not the majority, so, yeah. People want it everywhere, and it's always this is this you know this is with this craft that we do. There's always this, you know, your website is going to look wrong in someone's computer. Um, so as of October 17th of last year, Edge was quick to update it. It launched. So as October 20th, boom, we have 69% of support for Grid. Moved to a month ago, we're 82.8%. Now last a uh, couple of days ago, I took the screenshot. It's 84.2%. 84 so it's here, right? Some of the browsers. I don't have it are older versions of Chrome, Opera Mini, um, but the Samsung just, just released uh, support for it. So moving forward, we, the support will going to keep growing and growing and growing. If you look at the uh, usage related, right, most people use Chrome for Android or Chrome, Safari, so its support is there. So there's no reason why you shouldn't use it if, like there's some browsers in, uh, in India and China that, that um, don't support it. That's what some of that 16% uh, is. They you know, they have, if you have a, a client that needs to have support for those, there's a great little trick called uh, add supports for CSS, where basically you put your grid, you grid stuff on that um, query, and if the browser supports it, use it. If not, use the old stuff. And that support, supports is, it's highly, supports is highly supported. That's redundant. But anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, if you want to learn more, 
Uh, there's a ton of resources out there. It's a hot word. It's, it's, it's growing. Everyone's excited about it. But I'll definitely suggest going with Jen Simmons and Rachel Andrew. Uh, Jen Simmons has a website called labs.jensimmons.com, which she does a ton of uh, demos. I think she just started a YouTube channel. Uh, she has a, you know, her own podcast. He, she, uh, um, she has a new talk on, it's called, in in, I can never say that word, ESL, uh, in intrinsic design. And uh, Rachel Andrew, she wrote the book on CSS. Uh, she's amazing. She has a course on CSS. So you want to get started and want to learn uh, ins and outs of CSS, definitely recommend her course. She helped build CSS Grid. Listen <laughs> to her podcast. Listen to, um, does she have a podcast? I don't believe it. But anyway, she's awesome. They're, both of them are awesome. Go check them out. Go follow them on Twitter. And uh, just start from there and look at it, everything that they share. All right, so demos. I don't know if I can go faster than the previous. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Fingers crossed <laughs> that it works. <laughs> <laughs> So let's do some demos. Um, what I'll do right now is, let me see if I can bring out my, just so you see more or less how I'm starting to use it with. <coughs> what I have to do right now is, where are you, mouse? Figure this out. One second. Let's go. Ah, here it is. So let's mirror this. Let this thing play around. All right, so it's the first demo. Actually, the resolution is slightly different. So this is a website for a site project that I started building. Can you move this out of the way? One sec. Uh, now you can because of the, let's see if I can make it stick out. Here you go. So, this is just a website that I started building for a side project, you know, freelancers and their side projects. Um, <laughs> it was the first time ever where I, you know, so that's side projects, so I got excited, you know, let's use grid. If it breaks, then I'm not in trouble. And it was the first time ever that I actually went into Illustrator, which is a designer's tool for manipulating vectors, and I build my layout and I just move stuff around and I'm said, you know, I'm happy with this. I'm going to try it and then I try to translate it into the browser instead of me starting from a theme or from somewhere and trying to, you know, reverse engineer my way around it. And, you know, it's just a, 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 a you know, open transit. It's a toolkit for people that want to learn about how run subways. <laughs> and it's pretty awesome because I got to, uh, you know, imagine it, uh, some looking, I mean, imagine it looking like a subway, and I did some, you call it subway here? No, you call it Marta, right? Marta yeah. Subway, yeah. So let me see, what are the homepage? Will it load? Yes. And you know, my sections are going to be lines and, and subway stops, and I'm going to have a ton of white space, and I'm going to have some things go inside, and then some things are broken, but you're not seeing that, and I'm going to have some project news, <laughs> and, you know, it was just a fun thing for me to try out. So the way I did it with Grid, if you see this, it's a little hard to see what's going on. But once you see it with Grid, it starts making sense. I, you know, with the developer tools, it allows you to see your CSS on the site. So I just go to the class where I built. Let's go quickly here. Sorry for the resolution is a little low, but it'll start coming together here. You see here it says display Grid. So if you click on this little waffle icon, you'll notice that I've built some columns, and I gave them different widths. And you can actually see the columns at work here, right? It's so one column, two columns, three columns. And then I just place my things. I did some hacking with borders. So this has a border bottom and a border top. And I got, so I, I played around with this one. And then if you start seeing this one, it's just me setting, setting a grid before I even set out some content. And once I had the content, where's the other grid here? Uh, primary, no. Primary, no. This is a. If you work with WordPress, you're familiar with all of this, right? Articles. All right, home section, right? Here's my template columns and my rows. And it should say display grid here at some point on my CSS. Here it is. If I click on it, you'll notice the same pattern. So I said, you know, set uh, one, two, three columns, and I set some rows, and then I just place my content. The great thing about this is, 
I got to play around with the layout. So when it gets to a certain point, this jumps around, this gets smaller, things get, you know, rows get, rows get deleted, columns get shuffled, and, and overall it, it just works the same way for all of them. Now, I don't have to use uh, grid for all of them. For this one, I just went with Flexbox because it's a very unique, you know, it's a very uh, straightforward layer. I could have used grid, I could have used maybe not even flex, but for the other things where I was trying to uh, just explore and see how I could um, move things around and just put them on an unconventional way, I went with that. So that's, that's one that's almost ready to launch. I will say, you know, I'm waiting on content, so that means it's 30% done. Uh, <laughs> Then we have uh, Harlem Youth Soccer, which is uh, the work with FC Harlem, the program that I work with. It's a community, an awesome community um, organization that basically helps kids through soccer uh, become better citizens, become better people. And this one I was trying to get, I don't know if there's enough contrast, but there should be a background here that overlaps. So I wanted to have that background and that image overlap without using me negative margins. So what I did here, is this one? Yeah. I, if you see it with grid, it all starts making so much sense, right? You, all, all I did was, you know, it was much easier to actually see it here. All I did was this. I set up some grid, some columns, and I told them, I told the image, hey, you're going to go from column, from line one to three, right? From column one and two. And then the rest of you are just going to go on the next column. And then if the text gets smaller, just get smaller and then just break it. Delete that first column, put everything on column two, and then go down. So, and there is no media queries, it's mostly CSS, it's super responsive. I don't have to worry about, you know, looking at all the breakpoints and, and making sure that nothing is overlapping. And this is the same for all of them. Uh, I just, I'm working through my site and you know, as a designer, also your own website is the worst thing, it's always under construction. So don't look at it, just look at this. <laughs> and uh, one thing that I did, I was trying to have some fun with a grid, and this is all CSS. I just put a grid together, and looking at this, it looks pretty awesome, right? It looks a little JavaScript-ish. Uh -uh. It's so funny how I say it. it's pretty awesome. I don't know. It's, it's okay. Uh, and if you look at the grid that I built for this, and this is all built in WordPress, right? What I did is I grabbed a, for mine, I grabbed a, a a clean theme from underscores, started working from that, and just adding a couple of lines of code here, and then you see here's the magic, the display grid, click on it, and you see that I did an eight column layout, and I let my rows, my rows just grow automatically, and with CSS, I'm just, I'm just moving things around, there's no JavaScript at all. With CSS, I just tell it, hey, some of you move to the left, some of you move to the right, some of you dance to the bottom, and then just after 10 seconds, just come back, and that's all that's doing. It's, it's a little janky. It's not supposed to be janky, but let's see. It might be my, my, my connection. Uh, I feel like I'm on a client presentation where things are not working. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, and you see it's eight columns. Then at one point, I, I just tell it, you know what? Why don't you just go to four columns? And it just goes to four, and it keeps working as intended. And I'm always iterating, always changing things. But when you go all the way down, well, you can, I think, because of the resolution. But ideally, it should work on mobile. This is the part what I told you to trust me. Uh, so <laughs> so this, these are WordPress sites that I'm working on. I'm working on a couple more that I'm planning to implement as soon as the client lets me share. But the way I started doing it is I didn't go full in. And this is what I'm trying to say. Just try to implement it here and there. Try to see if you can put it on a plugin, put it on a snippet, put it on a footer. And the way I did it, I just started building that, like a small playground where I just started adding my code. Um, right now I have like three that are already up there. I have a few more that I have coming. One of them is, I really like this Moray effect, which is uh, based on, I don't know what is it based on, but it's an awesome book uh, called Poe Motion, P-O-E Motion, where you buy the book and it comes with a little plastic with holes on the lines, and then when you scroll, it does a pretty awesome thing that looks something like this. Uh, and, it, and it just does an optical illusion where if so, it looks like things are animating. Uh, and I wanted to try it. I wanted to see, hey, with it, you're supposed to be able to overlap things on CSS without hacking things. So and I actually put it together. And when you see it with grid, it, it also makes sense, right? Let me delete this. Which one are you? 
uh, inspected. That's how you get the, if you want to know how do you get to this thing that I'm getting, just right click to inspect element. And then on the left is the HTML, on the right is the CSS, and sometimes you get a right and you hack, you get a right. So if I do display grid right here, no, this is not it. I have to go to the child. Here you go. So this one has one. This the, the bottom one has a couple of rows, and then the balls are somewhere in here. Where are your balls? Um, so you see how they're. There you go. It's a ball row wrapper. Here, I just put my ball. <laughs> I did. They're demos, right? So it's about a hundred columns, and each one of them is six fr. They're all the same width, and then I just started placing my balls wherever I felt the the. You know, the, the, the illusion will work based on the book. I just grabbed it from one of the pages in the book. Uh, so that's one another demo. Another one that I started working with is one, of, one book that I really like. It's called um, Making and Breaking the Grid. I was like, oh, this sounds like something that could work for this. This is the book cover. And I just try to imitate it. So it came pretty awesome. It's not responsive. That's a problem. But you know, since it's been a demo, I was like, I'm going to make it the same exact layout. And you notice in a few things that are working pretty awesome here. Like, uh, it's there's an empty square here. There's a square. Well, that's not a square. Sorry, it's a rectangle. That's over. Things are overlapping. Things are starting from here and here. And there are no negative margins at all. All I did is build a few grids, fill the, the main layout. And so if you see my book wrapper looks something like this, you see they start to, make, start to see some familiar things, right? Grid rows and grid, grid columns. And if you see, for example, my Back rectangles wrapper, which you say grid somewhere. No, this is a flex. Still has, still go to flex for a lot of things. Uh, there you go. So it's just I told it to repeat 88 pixels 10 times, and then repeat 124 pixels six times, and it just goes, and it goes, it goes. So uh, it just fills it up for me. I don't have to figure out anything. That sounds like I'm not doing anything. I don't have to figure. Uh, <laughs> well, that's one. Um, you know, I'm. Um, doing this silly thing where I, I, when I travel, I just jump for no reason. And I wanted to put them all together. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty responsive uh, with no media queries. And all I did is also the same. Just this, this, is, this is a good example of, of the implic implicit uh, um, things that you can do with grid. I just did, this is one of the simplest. I just did a grid that's 10 by 10. Each one of them is 5 VW. Five VWs are an awesome unit if you don't know it. View per, view per width. Basically, your content grows as the browser grows. And then I just did a 10 by 10 all over my images. And then I just went to my image. And I said, you're going to go on column 2. Or you're going to go on column 1. You're going to go on 3. And you're going to expand until column 7. Maybe you can go to 6. Maybe you can go to 5. You know, I just position stuff around the way I felt like it. And then I stayed the same to my rows. You're going to start at row 1. You're going to start at row 2. And that's it. And then with nth of type, which is a CSS thing where you tell it, hey, um, CS hey well, what do I call my computer? Hey, computer thingy. Uh, <laughs> every third, every fourth, every fifth, just put things on a different. And that's it. It's doing it. It's making it look like it's random. But it's basically just the same, the same uh, short lines of code that go over and over again. And it's just uh, some pure CSS. And I think this is around, I want to say 100 lines of CSS, which is very, very, very little. Uh, now going back to remove this display. No, here. I want to go back to the presentation. It's my first time doing the demo, so sorry. I'm taking a little longer between the switches. But uh, anyhow, this is the last thought I want to leave you with. You know, it's Chris Collier is one of my favorite web designers, uh, and he wrote a tweet that says, just a little reminder that it's about 100 times more important what you build and how you build it. So we take like what a lot of people say as the gospel, or sometimes we don't know. Sometimes we get confused as to what we have to use. And sometimes we just don't start because of that. Get started. Play around, break code, do things. And look forward to seeing you speak at some point. And that's me. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Questions? Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't turn on the slow motion. <laughs> Any questions that I can answer slowly? <laughs> about grid, about anything? Yes.
Uh, well, you don't have maximums with either Flexbox or Grid. The thing is that uh, we so we build these boilerplate templates that, you know, they're the 12 because they're easy to use and they're consistent. And the way they've done them, they use 12. But they don't have to be 12. You can, like with that bouncy balls, I have 100. So with Flex, you could do the same. It wouldn't make much sense, right, because based on the screen size, I guess you have a huge screen, you could. So you don't have to. You can go um, an even number, an odd number. It wouldn't matter, yeah. Any other questions? Everyone's ready to go? <laughs> yeah. So you mentioned Firefox. Have you tried this? Uh, or are there development toolkits on some of the other browsers? Yeah, yeah, they all have it, actually. They have a, a, that's a great question. So she's asking if, if the other browsers have the same tools or similar tools to code. Yes, so Chrome, uh, Chrome has been sort of the leader in the industry when it comes to developers. Uh, they have pretty awesome tools when it comes to JavaScript. Um, uh, pretty much everything, page insight, speed. Uh, the, the reason I think Firefox is much stronger when it comes to CSS Grid is because Jen Simmons works for Mozilla. So she works directly <laughs> with them, she's been giving them feedback, and they've been releasing updates really, really fast. And grid, uh, Chrome actually has some sweet uh, grid tools now where you actually hover and it shows the grid. And, and, and it's, it's I have a bad habit where I go to Chrome and I keep Whenever it's great, I go back to Firefox, but then I go back to Chrome. Safari is like, uh, Safari, guys, I think they're still on, on yearly releases for the browser, right? Am I right? So it takes a little long for you to get something on Safari, but they still also have developer tools. Uh, for the other ones, I'm not sure. That's a great question. I don't know what they offer. Uh, thank you. Okay. Well, thank you, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. And